Welcome back. This video will be a continuation of the video where we learn about the three main approaches to calculating the price of a stock. We have the perpetuity formula that allows us to calculate the price of a stock with constant dividends. There is the Gordon growth model that allows us to calculate the price of a stock with constantly growing dividends. And lastly, the multi-stage growth model is applied to calculate the price of a stock that experiences dividends that grow at different stages. Specifically in regards to the Gordon growth model, there are two different versions of the Gordon growth model that can be used in different scenarios, the x-dividend formula and the cum-dividend formula. In this video, we will be exploring how to derive the x-dividend formula how to derive the cum dividend formula, and how the x dividend formula and the cum dividend formula are essentially two sides of the same concept. As a warning, this video will be quite math heavy. However, the purpose of exploring the derivations of these formulas is to help you better understand where these formulas came from. Throughout this video, we will also be using multiple examples to better illustrate why these formulas work and how they can be used. So buckle up and let's get this show on the road. Recall that the Gordon growth model allows us to calculate the price of a stock that raises the size of each consecutive dividend at a constant rate. And there are two versions of the Gordon growth model, the X dividend formula and the cum dividend formula. In both formulas, G is the constant growth rate of the dividends and RE is the cost of the company's equity, which is the appropriate discount rate that reflects the riskiness of the firm's equity relative to the rest of the stock market. In the ex-dividend formula, the numerator D1 is the amount of next period's dividend. Thus, the ex-dividend formula is used to calculate the price of a stock in situations where we, as an investor, just missed a dividend payment and anticipate on receiving the next dividend, which is exactly in one period. On the other hand, the cum dividend formula has D0 in the numerator, which is the amount of this period's dividend. Thus, the cum dividend formula is used to calculate the price of a stock in situations where this period's dividend is just about to be paid. In other words, as an investor, we anticipate that the dividend is just about to come. But why are these formulas the way they are? Let's start off with the derivation of the X dividend formula. If we were to draw the dividend cash flows on a timeline, we are trying to value the price or present value of a stock in today's dollars, which is at time zero by forecasting the future expected dividends from the stock and discounting them all the way back to today. For illustration's purposes, let's imagine that a company pays annual dividends, and the dividend today, D0, was just paid. Thus, when we are forecasting the future expected dividends, the first dividend that we are concerned with is the one that will be paid out one period or one year from today, which is D1. We can basically expect dividends every year until the end of time, Additionally, with the Gordon growth model, these dividends will grow at a constant rate, G. Note that many students confuse a constant rate with constant dividends. Constant dividends would suggest that dividends are the same amount each period. However, a constant rate suggests that the dividends are growing, but at the same rate each period. To illustrate, a constant rate G tells us that D2 is, in fact, equal to D1 times 1 plus G, and D3 is equal to D2 times 1 plus G, or D1 times 1 plus G squared, and so on as all of the dividends can be expressed in terms of D1. Since the stock price reflects the present value of all the dividends, these future dividends are discounted back to today, at the cost of equity, RE. From here, we can see a pattern. Each dividend term is multiplied by 1 plus g to the power of 1 less the time period in the numerator, and 1 plus r to the power of the time period in the denominator. If we factor out d1, we can more clearly see the sequential pattern. Furthermore, we can factor out 1 plus r from the sequence, 
so that the exponents in the numerator and the denominator of each term now matches. From here, we have a pattern in the future expected dividends. What we have factored out is the present value of the first dividend. And in the brackets, we can see that the present value of each future dividend becomes increasingly larger by 1 plus g divided by 1 plus r. In other words, the present value of the second dividend is equal to the present value of the first dividend times 1 plus g over 1 plus r, and so on for infinitely many dividends. So how can we find the sum of these dividends that keep growing forever? Thinking back to high school, this pattern, which is an infinite geometric sequence, may look familiar to you. Let's take a trip down memory lane together. As a quick recap, a geometric sequence is a progression of numbers where the next number in the sequence is found by multiplying the previous number by a fixed range, known as the common ratio. For example, we can build a series by starting with the number 1 and multiplying every term from here on out by half. Sure enough, our series will start growing from 1 to half to a quarter to 1 eighth to 1 sixteenth to 1 thirty second and so on. But if this sequence can continue for infinitely many terms as the next term keeps getting multiplied by half, how do we find the sum of this geometric sequence? Well, eventually the terms will start getting so infinitesimally small that the contribution of the next term to the overall sum of the series is pretty much negligible. Thus, we can calculate the sum of an infinite geometric series with the following formula. The sum of an infinite geometric series is equal to a, the first term in the series, divided by 1 minus x, where x is the common ratio, which is the constant rate that the terms in the sequence grows by. The sum can only be found if the absolute value of the common ratio is less than 1. Within this range, each term in the series will get smaller and smaller until they approach zero, at which point the sum will converge to a definite number. You can imagine that if the comma ratio was, say, equal to two, then the series will keep growing indefinitely, and thus the sum would be infinite. If the concept of geometric series is fuzzy in your memory, there is an abundance of resources online, including walkthroughs of the derivation of this formula on YouTube. But for now, let's run with this formula so that we can finish what we came here to do, which is to derive the x-dividend and cum-dividend formulas. Where we left off with the derivation of the x-dividend formula, we realized that the stream of future dividends follows a pattern where the first term is the present value of the first dividend, and each term is equal to the previous term multiplied by 1 plus g divided by 1 plus r, which we now know is called the common ratio. Of course, this is the same structure as an infinite geometric series. To make this more evident, we can substitute the common ratio 1 plus g over 1 plus r with a variable such as x. Thus, following the formula for the sum of an infinite geometric series, we know that the sum of the present values of all the future dividends must be equal to our first term, d1 divided by 1 plus r, all divided by 1 minus x. From here on, we will perform some simple algebra to simplify the equation. We can substitute our common ratio of 1 plus g over 1 plus r back in for x. We are now left with this complex fraction, which we can condense by rewriting 1 as 1 plus r divided by 1 plus r, so that the denominator is now expressed as one fraction. This complex fraction can be rewritten as a regular fraction by taking the reciprocal, leaving us with 1 plus r in the numerator and r minus g in the denominator. Finally, the 1 plus r in both the numerator and denominator cancel out, leaving us with a much friendlier equation. The price of a stock, which is the present value of the infinitely many future dividends, is equal to d1, next year's dividends, divided by re, the cost of equity, minus g, the constant growth rate of the dividends. Recall that the sum of an infinite geometric series could only be calculated if the absolute value of the comma ratio is less than 1, allowing the numbers in the sequence to get smaller so that the sum would also approach a finite number. When we take a look at the x-dividend formula, where the comma ratio is equal to 1 plus g divided by 1 plus r, we want to ensure that the numerator is smaller than the denominator so that this fraction is less than 1. 
This will always be true if RE is greater than G. In other words, the discount rate must be greater than the growth rate for us to be able to calculate a finite value for the price of the stock. Intuitively, this should make sense if we think about our cash flows. Imagine instead that G is larger than RE. What this means is that even after discounting the dividends, the present value of each dividend is growing even more, and as the dividends get larger and larger forever, the present value would be infinite. In reality, it is possible for dividends to experience supernormal growth, such as in tech startups like Uber and Tesla, in which case we can use the multi-stage growth model that we learned about in the previous video. But no firm can sustain a supernormal growth rate forever, which is why we don't have to worry too much about ensuring that RE is greater than G to use the x-dividend formula. Finally, with the x-dividend formula, sometimes we are given the value for D0, the dividend that was just paid, such as the example with Michael and Nike in the previous video. Take a moment here to pause the video to refresh yourself With this example, we applied the x-dividend formula, but we had to calculate for D1, the numerator, for ourselves. This is not a problem as we know that the dividends grow at a constant rate of G, which in this case was equal to 8%. Thus, we found that D1 is equal to $2 times 1.08, which is equal to $2.16. Generally speaking, we can modify the x-dividend formula and express the numerator, D1, as D0 times 1 plus G. For the scenarios where we are given the value of the dividend today that we had just missed out on, instead of the value of the dividend in one period from now that we anticipate on receiving next. Now that we have walked through the derivation of the X dividend formula, we can quickly understand how the cum dividend formula is derived. We already know that the difference between the X dividend and the cum dividend formula is that when we use the cum dividend formula, we are expecting to receive D0, the dividend that will soon be paid this period, which is missed out on in the scenarios where we use the X dividend formula. Thus, the cum dividend formula not only considers the infinitely many future dividends, but must also take into account D0. Following the same steps that we used to derive the X dividend formula, we first rewrite the dividends to be expressed in terms of our first term, D0. Note that with the X dividend formula, our first term was D1, which is why the X dividend formula was based on D1. But as you will soon notice with the cum dividend formula, we will now be basing all the cash flows on D0, the dividend we anticipate on receiving this period. Just like before, since the stock price reflects the present value of all the dividends, these future dividends are discounted back to today at the cost of equity RE. From here, we can see a pattern. Each dividend term is multiplied by 1 plus G divided by 1 plus R, all to the power of the time period. If we factor out D0, we can more clearly see this sequential pattern. Again, we can see a structure that is similar to that of the sum of an infinite geometric series, where D0 is the first term, as it is the first dividend that we expect to receive. And each term is equal to the previous term multiplied by 1 plus G divided by 1 plus R, our common ratio. To make the structure easier to follow, we can substitute the common ratio, 1 plus G divided by 1 plus R, with a variable such as X. Thus, following the formula for the sum of an infinite geometric series, we know that the sum of the present values of all the future dividends must be equal to our first term, D0, divided by 1 minus x. From here on, we will perform the same simple algebra to simplify the equation. We can substitute our common ratio of 1 plus g divided by 1 plus r back in for x. We are now left with this complex fraction which we can condense by rewriting 1 as 1 plus r divided by 1 plus r, so that the denominator is now expressed in one fraction. This complex fraction can be rewritten as a regular fraction by taking the reciprocal, leaving us with 1 plus r in the numerator and r minus g in the denominator. We have finally reached the cum dividend formula. The price of a stock, which is the present value of the infinitely many future dividends, is equal to D0, today's dividend, multiplied by 1 plus RE, the cost of equity, all divided by RE minus G, the constant growth rate of the dividends. 
And just like with the x-dividend formula, the sum of the series of the infinitely many dividends can only be a finite number if the dividends grow at a slower rate than they are being discounted. In other words, RE must be greater than G. Otherwise, the stock price would equal infinity. After performing a lot of math to derive both the x-dividend and cum-dividend formulas, it's easy to become overwhelmed by all the equations and variables. However, keep in mind that the purpose of understanding the derivation of the formula is to help you to better understand where the Gordon growth model comes from, how it can be used, and why it works. There is no magic to the Gordon growth model. After all, the whole point of the formulas is to calculate the present value of all the future expected cash flows. And when you boil it down to its core, finance is really about trying to put prices on different streams of cash flows. With the X and Come dividend formulas, we can put a price on infinite streams of dividends. To help with understanding the formulas, there are two points to keep in mind. First, think of the X and Come dividend as two sides of the same coin. The formulas are performing the same job, calculating the price of a stock with constantly growing dividends, which is a common practice for valuing the stock of mature firms with stable growth. The key difference is that the Come dividend formula calculates the present value right before D0, this period's dividend is about to be paid, whereas the X dividend formula calculates the present value right after D0 has been paid. Thus, you can imagine that for the same stock, the come dividend present value is greater than the X dividend present value, with the difference being the additional dividend today. We can test this with the Nike example from earlier. With the come dividend formula, we can see that if Michael purchases the Nike stock in time to receive this period's $2 dividend, the value of the stock is equal to $2 times 1.11 divided by 11% minus 8%, which is equal to $74. On the other hand, with the X dividend formula, we can see that if Michael just misses this year's $2 dividend, and so the next dividend he receives is D1, which is 8% greater than this year's dividend, then the value of the stock is $2 times 1.08 divided by 11% minus 8%, which is $72. The difference between the come dividend and the X dividend stock prices is $2, which matches this year's dividend. Is this a coincidence? Not at all. Since both the come dividend and X dividend formulas are calculating the present value of all the future dividends, and the difference between the stream of dividends is whether or not Michael receives the $2 dividend today, then it makes sense that the difference in the value of the stock is the $2 that Michael may or may not receive. This example also leads to the second tip to keep in mind. Many students get confused between using D0 to calculate the X dividend stock price and using D0 to calculate the come dividend stock price. The key thing to remember is that while we may use D0 to help us find D1, the numerator of the X dividend stock price, D0 itself is not being accounted for in the X dividend stock price. On the other hand, with the come dividend stock price, we need D0 as it is actually being accounted for in the come dividend stock price. Keeping this distinction clear in your mind is crucial to avoiding confusion between the two formulas, which, although are conceptually similar, are representing two different applications. All right, so let's summarize everything that we've learned in this video. First, we went on a long journey to derive the X dividend formula by drawing parallels to the sum of an infinite geometric series. We arrived at this formula that allows us to calculate the price of stocks where the first cash flow is D1, the dividend to be paid next period. We followed the same process to derive the come dividend formula right here where the first cash flow is D0, the dividend that is just about to be paid today. Do not get the come dividend formula confused with the modification of the X dividend formula, where you can use D0 to calculate D1 in the numerator. We also learned that we can use either formulas to calculate the price of a stock so long as the discount rate RE is greater than the growth rate G. Finally, we have emphasized that the come dividend and X dividend formula are essentially two sides of the same concept. While they both calculate the price of a stock with constantly growing dividends,
the COM dividend stock price is greater than the X dividend stock price by the value D0. Keep on practicing the X dividend and COM dividend formulas and soon you'll be valuing stocks like a pro. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.